Hello friends, how are we all doing? I am so excited because today we are doing my Christmas book haul slash unboxing. I am completely overwhelmed with how many of you guys have sent me a Christmas gift and I'm so excited to open these. It's the second Christmas. I'm, I'm so excited. Merry Christmas. Let me show you the stack. These have been coming through throughout the month and I have just been completely overwhelmed. I'm so thankful you guys are so kind. We'll talk about the voice in a second. <laughs> just hold up. When all of a sudden I hear this agitating, grating voice. This is all stuff from you guys. I am completely, I just, I'm so thankful. It's so kind of you guys to do this at Christmas, to send me a gift. Um, and we're gonna open it together in this video. Also, my family did send me some um, books as well for Christmas that I saved. Usually I film this video on Christmas Eve and get it out to you just after Christmas, but I don't know if you can tell by the voice, but I've been ill. <laughs> I'm trying to talk more normally for you guys. This is how I've been talking with my family. This is like my natural talking voice. This is me trying to talk. <laughs> slightly normally. So apologies if that's annoying. I'm gonna try and not be annoying. Um, but yeah, I've had to suck off, sadly, quite a few of my end of year videos on this last week of the year, because I just haven't been well enough to make them. It's very sad. This is our last video of the year, this one. But shall we just get into it? I'm so excited. It's like a second Christmas and I can't wait. We'll save the ones my family got me for last. We will first begin with the ones that some of you guys have got me. And I just have no idea what we're gonna, what we're gonna unwrap together. So, oh my God, I'm so excited. I love Christmas. This is so, you guys don't understand how kind this is of you. This is so kind and I appreciate it so much from the bottom of my heart. Okay, first one. <laughs> oh, this is quite a large book. Oh, okay, interesting. Merry Christmas from the Italian Scott on Twitter. Thank you so much. Okay, this is a 2023 release I've been very interested in. This is The Things We Do to Our Friends by Heather Darwent. It's set at the University of Edinburgh. Claire meets Tabitha. Tabitha is charismatic, beautiful, intimidating, and wealthy. Claire is sucked into her circle. And Tabitha reveals a lit little project they're working on, a project they need Claire's help with. It's reckless, possibly perilous, and might finally allow Claire to become who she always needs to be. <laughs> How exciting. This is Dark Academia. Twisted female friendships. These are all buzzwords for me, <laughs> as we can see. I haven't heard a ton of people review this though since it came out. This is one that I added to my list from the synopsis when I was kind of looking up 2023 releases. But I haven't heard a ton of people review it. And that actually always makes me excited because I kind of like being the first, not the first read a book, obviously that's <laughs> People have read this already probably. But the first in like my head to read a book and go into it with completely no expectations. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to get to this one. Next package, I'm just opening these up completely randomly. There is no order <laughs> to these. Oh, fun. We have got a sprinkle of saucy by Michelle Harrison. This is from Emma the Quiet Patron. <laughs> thank you so much, Emma. That is so kind. So a sprinkle of sorcery. This is the next in the Pinch of Magic middle grade series. And this is one of the middle grade series I spoke about a lot that I started in 2020. I started three middle grade series in 2020 and I have not made progress in any of them. And that's really a goal of mine in 2024 is to kind of make progress in those older series. Good luck. Good luck. Have yeah, fun. Hope it works this time around. And I loved A Pinch of Magic. I thought it was such a whimsical, beautiful, first book in a series, following these sisters. I love sister relationships. I absolutely loved it. Three sisters with a magical secret, a race against time to find a place that exists only in fairy tales, a journey that will take them into unimaginable danger. Oh, it looks like we're gonna be on a boat. How exciting. I also really love the kind of like aesthetic design of this series. I love it. So thank you so much, Emma. Oh my God, you guys are so kind. Next, what have we got? Oh, what is this? No way. No way. Ah, I'm very excited for this one. So this is from Clara. Clara says, happy Christmas, Megan. I've loved your content and patron this year. Thank you for all the effort you put in. Thank you, Clara. We have got Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Helen Fossick. <laughs> this is one of the Twitter releases that I have wanted to get into most. This is obviously one of the fantasy that people have been speaking about all year. And I would categorize this from what I know as cozy fantasy. And I'm just like, give me more cozy fantasy, please. Just give me all the cozy fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I do get a little bit disappointed with books that kind of seem like they're gonna be cozy fantasy and they don't turn out to be. So I'm a little bit hesitant because of that. But yeah, so many people have been loving it this year. We're following Emily Wilde, a meticulous researcher who's writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore. Oh, I'm so excited. Enchanting, sharp-tongued and footnoted academia. There's footnotes. <gasps> There's footnotes, guys. There's footnotes. There's footnotes! <laughs> ah! 
Try not to say mother challenge. Failed. I didn't know that was footnotes. Oh my God. You guys know I love footnotes. Oh my God. That makes this movie a five star prediction for me. That makes this a five star prediction for me. Thank you so much, Clara. You guys are picking such good ones so far. My goodness. Okay, next parcel. Oh my God, it's a big one. What is this? Oh my goodness, exciting. So this is from Karis. Merry Christmas, Meg. I wanted to get you a little something for Christmas and also say thank you for bringing me so much joy. I absolutely love your channel. I'm joking. <laughs> a big part of your lovely Patreon means the world. Thank you so much, Karis. Okay, you guys can't see, but I'm like dying, joking. <laughs> so this is a list, which can we just talk about the cover? I love it. I love the cover. <laughs> I know it might be controversial. I know some people probably don't like this, but I love this cover. And it's about this woman who is falling in love with her new fiance. It's like job of her dreams, man of her dreams. And then something called The List is circulated. And it is a list of anonymous allegations about abusive men. And her fiance is on the list. I've heard mixed things about this one, but it's one that I'm very intrigued to read. It seems very intriguing. So I'm very excited to pick this one up. Thank you so much. Okie dokie, next. So what have we got? Oh, this is from Rebecca, another of my patrons. Merry Christmas, Megan. I love this one and can't wait to hear your thoughts. Oh, interesting. So, Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead, which I've heard really good things about and then not so good things about. <laughs> Small town, Louisiana. There's this new church or new preacher. Stuff starts going wrong in the town and town secrets. Now, here's the thing. With Miss Ashley Winstead, I gave In My Dreams a Hold of My five stars and I did not love The Last Housewife. It was, I think I gave it a three, but it was maybe more of like a 2.5. I found The Last Housewife very disappointing. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's fun. Cause I think it could go either way. I just feel like In My Dreams I Hold A Knife had so much promise that I believe <laughs> that we could have something like that again. Ashley Wynn said, when I read In My Dreams I Hold A Knife, I thought it was gonna become a new favorite thriller author. And then my, The Last Housewife, put a spanner in the works of that. So thank you so much, Rebecca. I'm very, very, very excited to pick this one up. Okay, oh my God, we've got two. Oh my goodness, okay. What? Wait, no, there's three in here. What is going on? Okay, I was very confused for a second there <laughs> because Amazon has put the wrong, one of the wrong notes in here. <laughs> I've got like a French person gifting me the art of Frozen, like Frozen Disney but that's not for me. This is for a child somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, but that's just an extra note. I've just got an extra French person's note in here. <laughs> So these are from Lauren. Lauren has been, Lauren, you're one of like the OGs around here in terms of subscribers and patrons, I feel like. Lauren says, Merry Christmas. Even if I sometimes get too busy to join sprints and gain likes, your channel makes me happy. Thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you, Lauren, that's so kind. So we've got three becks from Lauren. And let me just start with the two that Lauren has been very kind with and gotten me sequels. <laughs> Sequels to the series I've started. So first, we have got Death Comes to Marlowe by Robert Thorogood. I read The Marlowe Murder Club earlier this year and really enjoyed it. Um, and this is the sequel to that. This is similar to The Thursday Murder Club in that it is humorous. We're following elderly characters solving murders in this quaint English town. There's an upcoming wedding of like the man in the town and they're having this like garden party and they find him crushed to death in his study. <laughs> And they're gonna go investigate it together. Then we have also got 10,000 Stitches by Olivia Atwater, which is quite short. That makes me excited. And this is a sequel to Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And these are Regency fairy romances. So I love Regency era. And um, so these are like cute little romances. I didn't love Half a Soul as much as I think other people did, but some people told me that the tropes in the second and third in this series would be more my thing. So I wanna continue on. Oh, this one we've got a housemaid falling in love with the gentleman. I'm really excited. This, these should be my kind of thing. These should be kind of five stars to me. So very excited to pick that up. And then we have got Beach Read by Emily Henry. So I am gonna start reading Emily Henry next year. I've decided I'm gonna give Emily Henry a go. Emily Henry is one of the authors I think is most likely to become one of my new favorite romance authors. I don't think this is gonna be my first Emily Henry. I think I'm gonna be reading my first Emily Henry in January for a video I've got planned, but I'm excited to have another one on the docket, on the list, to read if I enjoy. Lo loads of you told me I'd like Emily Henry. So thank you so much, Lauren. That is so kind to give me three books. That is like beyond kind. Thank you so much. Next package. Oh my gosh, we've got another sequel. As if. <laughs> So this is from Maria. Hi Megan, really enjoy your videos and wanted you to be able to continue the Bear Town series. Happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you so much, Maria. Okay, so we have got Us Against You, which is the next in the Bear Town series. You guys, you are doing me such a good service by sending me sequels. 
<laughs> so thankful. So I really, really loved Bear Town by Frederick Backman, and this is an X in the series. This one seems to be about two rival towns, and oh my god! <laughs> Basically, there's two rival towns of like hockey players. They're battling it out. They want to defeat each other. Rivalries turn to vendettas. By the game's end, someone from Bear Town will be dead. It's a murder mystery. <laughs> Excuse me. I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah, I'm really enjoying Frederick Beckman's writing. I am so excited to continue on the series. Oh my gosh, guys, you're being so kind sending me sequels. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. This one was a very bizarre Amazon box. I got like ripped into it. So this one's very exciting, but it seems to have come without a gift note. So if you sent this to me, please let me know. It is Rotten to the Core by T.E. Kinsey, the next in the Lady Hardcastle Mystery Series. This is number what? This is number eight in the Lady Hardcastle Mystery Series. You guys know how much I love this series. It's my favourite cosy mystery series. This one, the cider-related murders. Fun! <laughs> <laughs> this one seems that it takes place more in the town. I prefer the ones that take place in the town of Litter and Cotterill versus like all the ones that take place like in these different locations. I really like the ones that stay in the town because I think it's such a great imagery. Exciting. I'm so, thank you so much. I'm always excited to make a progress in the Hogwarts Mystery Series. I would like to get up to date with this series next year. That is a little goal of mine. Next book. What have we got here? What do we have here? Oh, this one's intriguing. Who is this from? This is from Meg. Meg. Another Meg. <laughs> hey Meg, Merry Christmas. I just wanted to send a little sign of appreciation for the joy watching your channel brings me. I love this world ride of a book. I hope you do too. This is The Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Grant. I'm gonna be honest, I, this is one I've heard, like I added to my wish list because I've heard people talk about it highly, but I can't remember a lot about the plot. What does this say? Rare book dealer. Oh, I love anything that like is book about a book <laughs> or book about books. Lily has just been given a tip off about the book of the most precious substance, a 17th century manual rumored to be the most powerful occult book ever written, if it really exists. With some of the wealthiest people in the world willing to pay Lily a fortune to track it down, she embarks on a journey from New York to New Orleans to Munich to Paris. If she finds it, Lily stands to gain more than just money. This could erase the greatest tragedy of her life, but will Lily Lily's quest to help her find some answers or will she lose everything in search of a ghost? <gasps> Fun! Okay, I'm very excited to read this. Let me know if you've heard anything about it, but that sounds right up my street, right up my street. So thank you so much, Meg. You are so kind. Okie dokie, next book. <laughs> We're getting through these. Oh my goodness, this is like wrapped in like... Oh, how exciting. Is there a note? Please tell me there's a note. I hate when there's not a note. <gasps> no! Oh no guys, we got another one without a note. So again, please let me know if this one's from you because there's no note in the box, but this is Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo. I love Elizabeth Acevedo. I've given her, I think two five stars and one four star. And I have been waiting for another book from her for a while. And this is, I think her adult debut. And we're following to my memory, these sisters who all have magic. And I think one of them can kind of like predict the deaths of, yeah, she can predict the day when someone will die. And she decides she wants to host her own living wake and her family get a bit worried. They're like, do you know you're gonna die? <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 no. I'm a little bit concerned. But yeah, I think this is all gonna be about the stories of these sisters and the family and their secrets and things they keep from each other and their love for each other. And I'm just very excited, you know, Elizabeth Alvedo has a really amazing way with words, like such a special way with words that I just think is kind of unparalleled. Um, and I love, I love the way she writes. So very excited to get into family law. Thank you so much. Okay, next one. Oh my goodness, can I get in? There we go, I got in. We have got, oh, oh my gosh, very excited for this one. Oh, this is from my patron Secret Santa. I ran a Secret Santa on my Patreon this year and my patron Secret Santa has, if I do say so myself, impeccable taste because they have got me The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. <laughs> I'm very excited to read this. Listen, we love Britney. We love Britney. Well, they're speechless. I was telling Tom how growing up, I would often like be with my grandparents and in their car, I had like three CDs. I had, I think I had a Busted CD. I had a McFly CD and I had Britney Spears Greatest Hits, the one with like the silver cover. So that is like my favorite Britney songs because I just grew up listening to them over and over and over again. I have heard wonderful things from people who read this. I'm also probably gonna get the audio book for this, but yeah, I'm gonna be reading this in January. I'm gonna tell you that now. I'm gonna be reading this in January because this is a great pick because it's one that I'm gonna read very quickly. So thank you so much to my secret Santa. What a wonderful pick. And yeah, I am just very, very excited to read this. Please let me know what you thought of this if you've read it. Oh my gosh, we've got two books. Oh, these are both very exciting books. Okay, let's see who they're from. So these are both from Jenny, one of my patrons, which 
which one should we start with? Okay, first we have got Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood. Jenny says, I know that you love Ali Hazelwood, so I hope you enjoy this little Christmas treat. Thank you for all the videos this year and can't wait to see what you read next year. Thank you so much, Jenny. Yes, I do love Ali. <laughs> Ali Hazelwood is my girl. <laughs> I will not hear any criticism of Ali Hazelwood. I love her romances and this is her YA debut. And I'm very intrigued to see how her writing style translates to YA because I like the adult elements. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very intrigued and are you assuming it's about chess? We've got one of them who loves chess. Maybe everyone loves chess. Who knows? We've got the bad boy of chess. <laughs> We've got the bad boy of chess. Shut up. Oh, we all like a bad boy though, don't we? Yeah, not a fuck chess player. Hello, Chris. But I really love like nerdy elements in books. Like I always say, I always think of this. I don't know why I associate chess and Scrabble, but whenever there's a book about chess, I always think about um, in Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, there's a whole essay about how much she loves Scrabble and like how she's like a best Scrabble player ever. And I love that. <laughs> I love that essay. And then Jenny is having another book saying, I remember you saying that your horror TV is looking a bit bare and it's an absolute must read. Plus it's Shauna Maguire. So you absolutely have to read it. And it is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, which is Shauna Maguire. It's a pen name for Shauna Maguire. Oh, yeah this is one where there was like a film crew who went underwater to film a mockumentary brings to life ancient sea creatures of legend it was lost at sea with all hands some have called it a tragedy now a new crew is assembled oh there's something about the deep sea that is absolutely terrifying <laughs> let's be honest there's something about it that's just absolutely terrifying and i've never read any mira grants by shauna mcguire like i've never read this pen name this is her horror pen name so having read only fantasy from her i'm very intrigued to see how her horror matches up with what i know shauna mcguire's writing to be like how is it different under this different pen name so thank you so much then before we get into the ones that my family has gifted me let's quickly look at one i gifted myself <laughs> this is a pre-order that i had that came in during december and i was like i don't trust myself to open this and not read it in december when i'm not allowed to read it so I'm just gonna not unbox it and I'm gonna unbox it in this video as a gift to myself and that oh my god I'm gonna cry at Heartstopper Volume 5 oh, I'm so excited you are the most beautiful thing that ever happened in my entire life oh I can't even look at it I just want to read it right now you guys know I love Heartstopper one of my favorite graphic novel series by far Nick and Charlie are in love but what happens next oh I think this is our penultimate Heartstopper we're only gonna get one more after this which is sad I think this is about Nick starting to look at like what university he wants to go to and like them figuring out how they're going to be apart from each other um which is a very real when you're in a young relationship that's a very difficult thing to navigate my approach was just to make Tom come to university with me <laughs> But, um, you know, it's difficult to navigate. So I'm looking forward. I'm sure it's gonna be very emotional, but I love, I love Heartstopper. So I'm so excited to get into that little gift to myself. Okay, and then we've got six books that my family have given me. Let's start with the ones that my aunt got me. We've got two, at least she got me two, which is a nice little round numbers. Okay, what have we got here? <gasps> oh, what a good choice. <laughs> We have got, um, everyone in my family has killed someone by Benjamin Stevenson. This is one that so many of you have told me that I'm gonna love. We have got a family where everyone in this family have killed someone, but in the first chapter, I think it tells you like on what pages, oh, what pages the murders are gonna happen. Oh, I love murder mysteries that like mix up the genre and take risks and like, oh, I'm so excited. Guys, I'm so excited for this one. This is one of the ones like, oh my God, I can't. I can't even speak to you. I'm so, Excited! <laughs> I feel like today, the future starts. So it's a good day. I'm excited. <laughs> and then there's a murder happens and it's one of the family members. I think this could be a five star. This is my kind of thing, we know. What a, what a pick, what a pick! Ah, I'm so excited for that one. Okay, what is this one? This is a larger one. It's pink. What's on my list that's pink? Oh, another great pick. Okay. We have got The Death I Gave Him by M. X. Lou, which is, I believe, a Hamlet retelling locked room murder mystery. Let's all take that in for a second. <laughs> and yeah, this is a debut that came out this year that I have been very, very intrigued to get to. Oh, why is there, why is some of it written in like a script? Transcript of recording. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh! I'm so excited to get to this one as well. How exciting. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Kerry, my aunt. Okay, you both are nice. Then we've got two that my grandparents got me. Let's have a look what they are. Oh, get out. Absolutely. <laughs> we have got The Goodbye Cat by Hiro Arakawa. This is by the author of The Traveling Cat Chronicles, which is one of my favorite books. I absolutely loved it. It made me sob. And this one's 
about a cat. A goodbye cat. I just know I'm gonna cry. I just know I'm gonna cry. I don't wanna talk about it. I know I'm gonna cry. It's the first one. The Charming Cat Chronicles made me cry so much. Oh, what a great gift. I love anything with a cat. I love anything with a cat on it. <laughs> then what is that other one from them? Let's see. We have got Ellie Engel Saves Herself by Leah Johnson. This is Leah Johnson's middle grade debut. And I'm just really intrigued by it. I have read, what have I read by Leah Johnson? I'm forgetting the name of it. Rise to the Sun is the one I haven't read. What's the one I've read? It's got the purple cover. Why has that left my brain? It's got the crown. I can't remember, I'll put it here. The one I've read by Leah Johnson. So an earthquake, I think, strikes Ellie's small town and she uh, discovers that she's got this like ability that she never knew she had. A video of her goes viral and her life takes an unexpected turn. And listen, I'm always looking for more middle grade that I'll enjoy. And this one sounded really good. And then we've got two final books that my parents got me. What have we got first? Oh, what a great pick. We have got Mammoths at the Gate by Nevo, which is the fourth in a singing heel cycle. I have read the first two in this series and I absolutely love them. They are a love letter to the act of storytelling and the art of storytelling and how that's passed through by generations and different cultures, their arts of storytelling. I absolutely love this series and I cannot wait to make more progress in the series. This one's quite like embarrassing that I haven't made more progress <laughs> in this series. I absolutely love Nevo's writing. I've got two standalones by Nevo that I need to read. I, and Nevo is one of my favorite. I just love Nevo's cadence and art of storytelling, which is <laughs> convenient because that's what this book is about. And then the final book from my parents is a very exciting one. And it is Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher. Another short novella. My mom got me novellas, which is, listen, I'm always here for novellas. We always need <laughs> We always need some short books on the TBR. So this is another fantasy from T. Kingfisher. Meet Toadling. On the day of her birth, she was stolen from her family by the fairies, but grew up safe and loved in the warm waters of fairyland. Once an adult though, the fae ask a favor of Toadling, return to the human world and offer a blessing of protection to a newborn child. Simple, right? If only. Centuries later, a knight approaches a towering hall of brambles where the thorns are as thick, thick as your arm and as sharp as swords. He's heard there's a curse here that he's breaking, but it's a curse Toadling will do anything to uphold. How exciting. T. King Fisher has quickly become one of my favourite authors this year. I have read, how many T. King Fishers have I read? I've read Nettle and Bone, What Moves Are Dead, and um, A House of Good Bones. I think this year I've read the, all of those. So I am just, oh, it's bled by Catherine Arden and Travis Bowdry. Ah, how exciting. So yeah, I'm very excited to read another T. King Fisher. Um, because I've loved everything I've read from her so far. Okay, everyone, that was my Christmas book haul. Thank you again so, so, so much to anyone who gifted me anything this Christmas. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it, how much it means to me, how thankful I am, how kind you are. Just so, so wonderful and so kind of you. Thank you so much. I hope you all, if you celebrate, had a wonderful Christmas. If you find it a difficult period, I hope you at least had a peaceful time. I'm sending you guys all the love and I will see you, the next time I'm gonna see you is gonna be 2024. What the hell? Um, yeah, I'll see you next year. I am so excited for all the videos I've got coming in January. Just as much as I love end of year content, I love start of year content. I love making the TBRs. I love setting the goals. So yeah, I will see you next year. Ha! How funny. I'll see you next year. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your year. Until then, bye guys. Bye.